In this video, I want to explain how we're able to book hundreds, if not thousands of meetings for ourselves and across our agency clients as well. And why most agencies can't book meetings consistently, right? If you're not booking meetings and taking calls every single day, and you're not converting these calls into clients, then you are doing something very, very wrong. So in this video, I want to explain what these things are. And again, I've made every single one of these mistakes. So I don't want this to be a case where I'm just, you know, telling you that you're wrong, that you're wrong, that you're wrong but because I've done it, right? I've done all these things wrong and I've fixed it and I found the solution, which is why I want to share it with you in this video. So if you don't know who I am, my name's Ethan Walby. I'm the co-founder of Agency Growth Partner. We've been helping dozens and dozens of established marketing agencies, usually between six and seven figures, add an extra six figures to their monthly revenue by building out these client acquisition machines like I'm going to talk about in this video. So the main reason why most agencies aren't able to book meetings consistently and then convert these calls into sales, into high paying clients is because they look at everything in isolation, right? They look at sending outreach at, you know, operations, at marketing, at sales. They look at it as if all of these components operate by themselves. Whereas in reality, they all operate together. So I'm going to explain exactly what I mean, but for an example, when you send outreach, all right? So you have your agency, you reach out to a brand or a company that you want to work with saying, hey, we can do this for you. Most agencies, they look at this in isolation. So they think that they're gonna send the message. The other person's gonna read the message. They're gonna be like, hmm, nice email. I'm gonna book him. I'm gonna book a sales call. But in reality, that's not the case. So because agencies think this, they don't optimize the website. They have no social profiles. They don't have anything online besides this little email that isn't even written that well. The only thing they have is that little email that they send to the prospect and they think that's going to be enough to get a prospect onto a call. And I used to do the exact same thing. I would send the email. I would forget about everything besides the email. I wouldn't even put a profile picture on the actual Gmail account that I was sending from. Because the advice that I heard was, ah, oh, those things don't matter. No one checks your website. That doesn't matter. Just get them onto a sales call. People say this all the time. But the thing is, I didn't get results when I started. And when I was doing it for clients as well, I also saw they didn't get results. And the biggest shift that I made was realizing, oh, the clients that have the best, you know, websites, they have the best content online, they have the best social image, they get the best results, they get it so easily. Because the lesson that I learned is the prospect isn't just gonna book a call from a message or an email or a call. They're gonna check every single thing that they can find online about you before making a decision. So you send a message to a prospect, they see a message, they're interested because the message was well written, then they start checking your, your LinkedIn or your website, and then they see your website and it hasn't even been released yet, and they check your LinkedIn and there's no profile picture and there's like, you know, some stuff about from high school, and then it doesn't look professional. So they don't think you're established, so they don't book in a call, and then you think outreach doesn't work. But the problem wasn't the outreach. The problem wasn't the message. The problem was everything besides the message. So the biggest realization that I made that allowed us to go from, you know, booking meetings sometimes a couple of weeks to being able to book three, four, five meetings every single day for ourselves and for our clients is realizing that every single thing in business is interconnected, right? So the first example that I saw was with YouTube, right? Every single call that I got onto since I started posting on YouTube, they would mention, yeah, so I watched four of your YouTube videos and I was like, what, you watched four of my YouTube videos? I didn't, even, I didn't even know people saw that. They had like 10 views each. And then I realized that every single person that comes out to a call, they do their research. Because if you're reaching out to business owners and you think that they're just gonna get onto a call with some random email, some random guy that sent an email, then you are completely wrong because they're not gonna waste their time. They're going to do their research. They're going to check anything that they can find to make sure that where they're spending their time is useful. They're not going to get onto a call for nothing. So when I started posting on YouTube, people would watch the videos, surprisingly, before they got onto a call. And because of that, they already knew me. They already understood what I did. They already trusted me because they used the information. They put it into practice and they saw it working. So by the time they got onto a call, they already knew that what I offered was valuable because it worked for them. So not only did this get me more bookings because they saw that I was established, that I was trustworthy, but it also increased my close percentage, which resulted in me being able to charge more at the same time. So I was booking more meetings, increasing my close percentage and raising my prices because I realized that everything is interconnected. Because they watch the YouTube, 
they booked the meeting, because they watched the YouTube, they built the trust. And because they already knew me and they had the trust, I could easily charge more because I didn't have to spend all of the sales calls trying to convince them you know, or remind them who I am in the first place. And the second example that I wanted to quickly go through was signing clients from my personal Instagram. So when I first started in business, I thought I was gonna keep my Instagram, right? That'd be where all the personal stuff is. That is where I talk to people, all that, and just keep it completely separate from business, right? They were gonna be completely on its own, but like I was saying, everything is interconnected. You can't operate in isolation anymore because everything is digitized, because everything is online, there's no isolation. It's not like someone's gonna be in one country and someone's gonna be in the other and you just can't see each other. It's all connected. So because I thought I was gonna keep it private, I didn't post any business stuff on there. I didn't worry about that at all. But what happened is that because I was posting on YouTube and some other platforms as well, people would just funnel to my personal Instagram. And when that happened, you know, I wouldn't really worry about it. I would get new followers like every day, but I didn't think it was from YouTube. I didn't think it was from business. I thought it was just, you know, random people or, or those bots. But what happened was I would get people asking me business questions on Instagram. And I thought it was normal. I thought it was people starting out. But then I started seeing the bigger agencies, right? Our ideal clients would be there asking me questions and you wouldn't even think of it. And they would eventually book a call that eventually, you know, get onto the call and then become a client through Instagram. And the thing was, I didn't promote my Instagram at all, right? It was completely separate, but people would find it. People were actually looking for it because people wanted to see that human element. They wanted to see that personal element of it. So that resulted in them proactively going on their phone, searching my name into Instagram, trying to find me and then following me just to book a call and then become a client in the end. So that point was there just to illustrate the fact that again, every single thing that you do online is interconnected. So every single thing needs to be optimized. It doesn't have to be the absolute best profile in the world, but just, just, just take off the pictures of you drunk from high school and doing some stupid things that I'm not even gonna mention. But what I will say is that the best place to start, and this is what I'd recommend for you right now. So as soon as you finish this, make sure this gets done if you're sending some sort of outreach is that you want to pick the platform that you're going to be using for the outreach right now. So if your goal is to sign clients, you need to send messages to get in, in front of the right people so they can get onto a call so that you can close them, right? Pick the platform that you're using for your outreach, whether this is email, whether this is LinkedIn, whether this is Twitter, and then work outwards from there. So the most important thing is to have the profile set up correctly, right? Send your message, make sure the profile is correct, make sure it's optimized. I have other videos on that but then work outwards. So start with the profile you're using. If you're using email, make sure you have a profile picture, make sure your website's actually live because they're gonna look that up. Make sure that when they search your name, it's not gonna be some crazy things that come up. So just make sure everything around what you're doing right now is optimized. If you're doing outreach on social media, make sure your profile's right. If you're doing outreach on email, make sure your website's right. Make sure you have a profile picture. Make sure you have all these things. And as you go along, keep expanding outwards. So if you think that if you're posting on YouTube, people are gonna check your Instagram, then do your Instagram next. Just make sure it looks all right. Just don't look stupid and you'll be fine. And I just wanna end this video off with a new way of thinking is that instead of thinking, oh, I hope they don't check my website or, oh, I hope they don't check my Instagram profile. I know I put some bad stuff on there. Instead of thinking that, you can view every single asset, right? This is the keyword, asset that you have online to sell prospects into what you do and into you as a business owner or you as you know a brand because i can tell you right now that by having these personal aspects and having them optimized like having pictures of you on instagram or twitter or wherever it might be this will benefit you and it can benefit you if you do it correctly so instead of viewing everything as just a necessity use them as assets that are going to help you in business for everything that you do moving forward because if you shift to that way of thinking, you can get all the benefits of what I was speaking about in this video, like increasing the amount of bookings that you get. When you do get the bookings, increasing the number of shows, getting more people to get onto the calls, and then you know converting more of them into clients, being able to charge more, everything. Right, so if you found this video useful and want some more information about what we do, you can just check the link in the description. Otherwise, highly recommend subscribing, leave a like, and I'll talk to you in the next one.